In my experience, there are five major mistakes that new shrimp keepers frequently make, and each of these mistakes will lead to the death of your shrimp. I've been keeping fish and shrimp for over 30 years, and I've made each one of these mistakes and learned the hard way. Hopefully, by watching this video, you won't make the mistakes and your shrimp colony will grow and thrive and produce lots of healthy, colorful shrimp. Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Richard and I'm a fish and shrimp keeper based in the UK. The first mistake that so many new shrimp keepers make is not researching the type of shrimp they're going to buy. Now in our hobby, there are essentially two main types of shrimp that shrimp keepers keep the Neocaridinas and the Caridinas. And yes, there are other types of shrimp. Not every shrimp falls into one bucket or the other, but most of us are starting our hobby with either the Neocaridinas or the Caridinas. Now to the casual observer and those who are perhaps new to the hobby, there doesn't seem to be much difference between the two, apart from their perhaps different colors and, and slightly different patterns on one than the other. But in fact, these two shrimp could not want more different water parameters to live in. The mistake new shrimp keepers make is not researching the types of water parameters the shrimp want before buying them. Now, where I live in the UK, we naturally have hard water, which has a high level of dissolved minerals. Luckily for me, that's exactly what Neocaridina shrimp want. Neocaridina shrimp want hard water. They want a pH of between seven and eight. They want lots of dissolved minerals in the water. That's why I choose to keep Neocaridina shrimp. Whereas Caridina shrimp, they like a soft water. They like a few dissolved minerals in the water. They like a low pH. If I was to go to my local store and purchase 10 Caridina shrimp and drop them into my tank water, the shrimp would not be very happy. In fact, they'd be very unhappy. And the chances are that colony would quickly perish. The same is essentially true if you have very soft water in your aquariums and you were to drop a colony of near Caridina shrimp and you didn't do anything to adjust your water, there's a good chance that those near Caridina shrimp would fail to thrive in your water. Now, can you adapt the water? Can, could I put my tap water through an RO unit and end up with softer water that I then remineralize to make it suitable for the Caridina shrimp? Yeah, of course I could. Now, if I had soft water, could I add lots of crushed coral and other minerals to make it suitable for the near Caridina shrimp? Yeah, not a problem at all. It, everything can be done. If you're new to the hobby, the chances are you're not going to want to or even know to run your tap water through an RO unit to take it from hard water to soft water for your Caridina shrimp. So to avoid making mistake number one, find out what type of tap water you have and then research which shrimp will be most suitable for that tap water. Now, probably the second most common mistake new shrimp keepers make is starting with high end, high quality, typically expensive shrimp. If you spend any time on the internet or on YouTube looking at shrimp, you'll realize we are bombarded with images and videos of real high quality shrimp, expensive shrimp, amazing looking shrimp. And they're the kind of shrimp we can all aspire to keep one day. But typically high quality shrimp have been produced by real intensive selective breeding, which means they are typically a lot more fragile than your bog standard cherry shrimp. If you are brand new to this hobby and you decide to start with some high end super duper shrimp that you might pay 20, 30, $40 a shrimp, unless you know what you're doing, unless you have an established setup that is absolutely ideal for those shrimp, unless you understand the idiosyncrasies of that particular strain, the chances are your colony is not gonna thrive. If you're new to the hobby, cut your teeth, learn your trade, learn the hobby on bog standard, relatively cheap, available shrimp. I would always recommend that those new to the hobby start with a standard cherry shrimp or start with something damn near indestructible like an Amano shrimp. You can learn all about shrimp keeping with those shrimp. They'll be incredibly forgiving of some of the mistakes new shrimp keepers make. And then in time, you can build yourself up you'll soon discover this is possibly the most addictive hobby in the world. You can build yourself up to tanks with high quality shrimp. It gives you something to aspire to once you know what you're doing. I would never ever recommend a new hobbyist who's never kept shrimp before start with a high quality strain. It's a recipe for disaster. Common mistake number three, which sounds contradictory to mistake number two, is starting with poor quality shrimp. And one of the great things about shrimp keeping is shrimp breed incredibly easy. It's incredibly easy to produce hundreds and hundreds of cherry shrimp. And at the moment, our hobby is one that's on the up and becoming more and more popular 
every day. People are joining this hobby constantly, which means there is a market for people to bash out poor quality shrimp, sell them to unsuspecting hobbyists who take them home, add them to their tank, and the shrimp die. They never stood a chance. If you're going to be buying some shrimp, you need to find yourself a good quality breeder. In a perfect world, you will source your shrimp from somebody who breeds them in your local area. If you can find someone in your town or in your city that breeds shrimp in the same water that you're gonna keep your shrimp, and you can go and visit them and meet them in their, in their home or their breeding facility, and you can spend an hour talking rubbish about shrimp and chewing the fat with them, take home 10, 20, whatever shrimp from them. There's a good chance those shrimp will do much better than if you just go online and source the absolute cheapest cherry shrimp you can find. You can find shrimp that might sell for less than a dollar a piece. You can find people that are selling 10 shrimp for five bucks. The chances are those are going to be poor quality shrimp that that person just wants to get rid of because they're no good. So don't end up making mistake number three, which is buying a poor quality shrimp. Give yourself a fighting chance, find yourself a reputable breeder or a reputable local store and buy your shrimp from them. It gives you a much better chance of having success in the long run. Now, if you want to become a better shrimp keeper or just take your shrimp keeping to the next level, why not check out my new book, The Near Caradina Shrimp Handbook, which is 97 pages, jam packed full of information about shrimp keeping, feeding and breeding, and has been described as the most comprehensive book ever written about Near Caradina shrimp. Now, mistake number four I often see new hobbyists making is not feeding their shrimp enough food. Now, shrimp are often sold as cleanup crew. They're sold as, they will, they'll eat the leftover fish food. They'll consume the fish poop. They'll eat the leaves that are dying. And whilst they will do all those things, at the end of the day, they're detrivores. They make their living eating leftover stuff. If you want to build a strong, successful, colorful colony that breeds lots and lots of babies, you need to actively target feed your shrimp. You need to make sure your shrimp get enough food. Now I get a lot of flack when I post pictures of how much I feed my shrimp. People always say to me, you're overfeeding, that's too much, you're gonna kill your shrimp. I feed my shrimp lots and lots of food because that way the shrimp colony grows. They produce lots of babies. I feed a wide variety of food. I feed sinking pellets, algae wafers. I feed crushed up flake. I feed rapashi gel food, frozen bloodworm, frozen daphnia. And I feed them as much as they will consume in a short period of time. And what I always say to new hobbyists is, when you get your shrimp, put in a small amount of food. If they consume that food within 10 or 15 minutes, next time, add a little bit more food. And if they consume that really quickly, you add a bit more and you keep adjusting until you work out how much food your colony of shrimp will consume. Now, each of my tanks has a different number of shrimp in, so each tank gets a slightly different amount of food. And over time, as the colony grows, you will need to increase the amount of food. If today your colony consumes half an algae wafer a day, in six months, hopefully, if you're doing your job properly, they will need four or five algae wafers a day. You'll have hundreds of shrimp in there that will swarm the food and, and, will, and will eat everything you put in in a short space of time. Now, depending on what food you put in, might depend how much, yeah, how quickly you want them to eat it. If I add rapashi gel food, I want them to eat it within 24 hours. If I add frozen bloodworm, I know that'll be fine in the water for, for 10 hours, 12 hours before it starts breaking down. Whereas if I put crushed up flake for uh, to target feed the baby shrimp, I don't want to put so much in because I know that will quickly dissolve and disintegrate and spoil the water quality. So to avoid making mistake number four, make sure you feed your shrimp enough food and take time, take a week or two of observing your shrimp and work out how much food they consume in a suitable amount of time and feed them that much. So mistake number five is using a canister or a hang on back filter. Now, let me explain. These two filters themselves are not a problem. I use hang on back filters, I use canister filters. They're fabulous filters. The problem is both of these filters have an intake tube with a strainer on the bottom, which is perfect for keeping out fish. Fish almost never get sucked up into the filter. The trouble is those strainers are rubbish at keeping out shrimp, especially baby shrimp. If you spend any time observing an aquarium with shrimp in that runs a hang on back or a canister filter, you will at some point see typically a baby shrimp, but shrimp nevertheless come past and sucked straight up that strainer. And whilst you sometimes open a canister filter and you find you've got a colony of shrimp somehow living in there, 
typically the impellers on these filters kill the shrimp and you end up just losing your shrimp. You start with 10 shrimp, you're running a hang on back filter. And within a couple of three weeks, you're thinking to yourself, I can only see four shrimp, where on earth have my shrimp gone? The answer to this is to add an intake sponge. An intake sponge, exactly as it sounds, is a sponge that slips over the intake to the filter. Now this intake sponge actually does three things for you. Firstly, it does stop any shrimp from getting sucked up into the filter. All of that suction is dissipated across the surface of the sponge, meaning the suction on any given area is very little. Secondly, it stops any particles of food or, or leaves from that are breaking down from your plants being sucked into the filter where they will typically rot, meaning your filter requires less regular maintenance. Your filter runs cleaner if you have an intake sponge. And thirdly, the sponge itself becomes an absolute banquet hall for the shrimp because bits of detritus, bits of uneaten food, bits of plant that are breaking down get stuck to it. You will find your intake sponge becomes the dining hall for the shrimp. They'll typically be covered in shrimp who are picking at whatever is stuck to the sponge. One of the biggest killers of shrimp in our hobby are canister filters and hang on back filters. Now, mistake number six, which is probably the biggest shrimp killer of all for new hobbyists, is adding the shrimp to the aquarium too soon after that aquarium is set up. Now, when we set up an aquarium, we add the filter, we add the plants, the substrate, whatever it might be, that aquarium needs to cycle. And cycling means we need to build up the beneficial bacteria in the filter and in the aquarium generally that will process the waste from the shrimp, from the fish, whatever it might be. That's fine. Most people understand that cycling an aquarium is really important. But that's not what is killing shrimp when we add them to the aquariums too soon. Our shrimp love to eat biofilm. Biofilm is a naturally occurring sort of slimy coat that land, that covers everything in the aquarium. If you take out a rock or, a, or a, a, take out the heater or the pipes from the filter, everything feels slightly slippery, not wet, just slimy. That slimy coating is biofilm. Biofilm is made up of naturally occurring bacteria and the starts of algae, microscopic crustaceans and all sorts of, of life that lives at a microscopic level that the shrimp love to dine on. If you see your shrimp on the leaf of a plant, picking away constantly, when you see them on the heater at the back or the filter pipe or the glass, it's the biofilm that they're living on. Biofilm is so crucial to the life of the shrimp that if you add your shrimp to a tank which is newly set up and has no biofilm in it, there's a really good chance those shrimp won't make it even if you're target feeding them and making sure they get enough food. Whenever you set up a new shrimp tank, you need to leave that shrimp tank ideally for several weeks and I know that's incredibly tough to have a glass box full of water with the plants, with the filter, with the lights and for two, three, four weeks you don't put anything in it. I know that's incredibly tough, especially if you're new to the hobby and that's your only aquarium. But if you want to have a successful shrimp colony, you want to have a shrimp colony that's gonna thrive and grow and produce you lots and lots of colorful shrimp for years to come, then you need to allow that tank time to mature, time to season, time for the biofilm and the microscopic life to build up in that aquarium to the point where the shrimp will thrive. If you ask any really experienced shrimp keeper, what is the one secret they would share with a new shrimp keeper? It will be, I'm sure, allow the tank time to mature before adding your shrimp. 